Well, in this election cycle, we've been tasked to consider the next four years and evaluate platforms across candidates. I, let me tell you, I love, love, love New York. It's good that you're here. It's better than I'm here because data is huge. It's huge. Big data is big league. But together, we can make data great again. And let me tell you, data migration is a serious issue. A ser frankly, it's a disaster. It's a disaster. We're building too many walls around data, too many walls. We've got to get rid of these walls. I know, coming from me, you might be surprised, but I talk to people, many, many people, smart people. They tell me converged data platform is fabulous. It's a game changer. So pay attention in the next few minutes. I think you'll learn a lot. It'll be great. It'll be great. Well, thankfully, we don't have to rely on claims. There's some eye-popping data to put this into perspective. If you look over the next four years, we're going to experience flat IT budgets. And underneath that, we'll see a decrease in legacy spend and a corresponding increase in next-gen spending. The data also shows that within the next four years, 90% of all data will be on next-gen technologies. So how are you currently storing data in your organization, and are you already behind? But not all platforms are equal. The choice you make is important. Your agility, your cost structure, your future competitiveness depends on making the right choice. So how will you choose? Many organizations selected a new data platform to reduce costs. IRI, a leading market research and information company that counts 95% of the global fortune retailers and CPG companies as customers, they save millions of dollars annually by offloading mainframe processing. Gracenote provides metadata and technology to entertainment, automotive, and media companies. They decreased costs by 75% and reduced processing times from 24 hours to a few minutes. Experian is an international information services organization with global revenues close to $5 billion. They offloaded data from mainframe and SAN systems to increase performance at reduced costs. There are also many companies that selected a data platform to develop and deploy new applications. TransUnion developed a new self-service analytics platform to give their customers market insights to help them operationalize decisions. United Healthcare, which counts 51 million people that get health benefits from, from UHG, they generated a 2,200% return on their big data platform with applications that identified and prevented fraud. Liaison chose a data platform to meet the diverse data requirements of hospitals, labs, practices, and payers to converge data processing, streaming, and analytics to provide real-time value to customers. Regardless of how companies start, they quickly move to multiple applications. In fact, all of the previous examples, all of those previous companies now provide innovation, drive innovation, as well as reducing costs. So the platform you choose needs to have broad capabilities. It needs to scale. It needs enterprise requirements so that you can have data available and protected. It needs to support legacy applications and integrate with existing systems to reduce costs. 
and it needs to support real-time and integrated analytics for applications. Because these applications are not just reporting applications, these applications are making adjustments and impacting business as it happens. So let's review the candidates. There's traditional storage, but traditional storage is kind of like the 94-year-old senator. You ultimately question its effectiveness and how long it'll serve. There are many reasons why, but ultimately, traditional storage lacks the scale, the cost effectiveness, and integrated analytics to serve as a winning platform. What about Hadoop? Well, there are two layers to Hadoop. We tend to focus on the compute layer and the rich, vibrant ecosystem that's great. But the underlying data platform has the same issues today that existed when Hadoop was created during the, during the Bush administration. And it's storing its data in the Linux file system that was created during the first Bush administration in 92. Hadoop lacks enterprise-grade features like consistent snapshots and mirroring for DR. It's a batch file system, not real-time. It has scale issues, over 100 million files, and legacy applications cannot use it as a standard file system. Spark has re received a lot of attention, a lot of excitement. It's an excellent distributed processing and streaming analytic platform, but there is no persistence layer with Spark. There's no data platform, and hence, it's not a candidate. Cassandra is a document store, but because of the, the required trade-offs in eventual consistency model, you must select between scale and speed and consistency, and you can't get all three simultaneously. It also lacks integrated analytics, so at best, this platform will be supported by narrow splinter groups. There are several write-in candidates, Kafka, MongoDB, but at the end of the day, they're one-issue candidates. They're great for a single workload, but lack the broad capabilities required in a winning platform. But there's a final candidate that combines all of the capabilities of the previous candidates, including the write-in candidates, and that's a converged data platform. It supports operational and analytic capabilities at scale to impact business as it happens. But convergence is not simply about combining data sources and processing. There are many dimensions to convergence. The ability to converge data at rest and data in motion. The ability to converge on-premise and cloud processing. To converge legacy and, and next-generation workloads. And finally, to do deep analytics with real-time processing on the same platform. So the final consideration is how does a, a candidate, how does a platform appeal to a broad group of constituents? With the line of business owners, with the business managers, they're looking for something that can reduce costs and drive innovation. If you look at architects and administrators, they're looking for a converged platform to simplify administration, reduce cluster sprawl, and unify security, data protection, and disaster recovery. And for developers, they want flexibility, they want agility, they want to simplify the development process for a broad set of applications, including real time. And to that end, we made a, a significant announcement yesterday. We announced the support for event-driven microservices on a converged data platform. And the announcement include, included a converged application blueprint to give developers access to downloadable source code, application architectures, and tutorials. So now there's a simple, agile way to develop applications that address operations, analytics, and ultimately, that can transform a company. So not all platforms are the same. The choice you make is important. The agility, the cost structure, your future competitiveness depends on making the right choice. We hope you take the time to check out the MapR Converge data platform. 
and that we have a chance to earn your vote. And one last thing. You've been a fabulous audience, absolutely fabulous. But look, we've got some, some great talks here. It'll make a huge difference in your life. It covers microservices, streams, real-time convergence. It's all there. And the speakers, they do a fabulous job, a fabulous job. Jim and Ted, written books. Crystal, a professor. They're all great, They're, except for this Jack Norris. I hate his voice. It's horrible. It's, it's not good. Of course, you already know that. Remember, together, we can make data great again. Enjoy New York.